Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is a mostly knitting podcast. Sometimes I do talk about other things like sewing and natural dyeing. Today it's mostly knitting. I do have one sewing item that I want to share with you all that you've seen before, but there has been an update. And I've got a couple of finished objects and some whips to talk about, and then also some future plans. So let's get started. Okay, so if you've watched any of my previous videos, especially the latest ones, you'll know that I'm really trying hard to work through some of my whips that I have on the go. I had about 10 whips and that was just way too much for me, so I've been working one by one to get them done. If you've been here for about a year now, you might recognize what I'm wearing. And this is the Farfa Top by the Knit Pearl Girl. I started this on... I think it was March, near the end of March, March 30th or something like that last year. And I finished it just a couple of days ago. So it was almost a year to the date that this was on the needles. Reason being is this is a very tiny gauge. It's using Knitting for Olive Pure Silk One Strand. So it's very tiny, but it is so worth it. This is a top that when I saw it on Ravelry, I knew that I needed to have this and I wanted it right away. So. I mean, I did want to have it for summer of 2023, but that's okay. I have it for summer of 2024 now. I'll stand up here so you can see it. I have it tucked in to some of my Joss pants that I've sewn. This top has an eye cord, applied eye cord around the neckline. It is a top down raglan. The main feature being these flowy sleeves here, these bell sleeves. I did the one tier option so you can also do increases a second time for a longer sleeve. It has a folded hem. And at the back, it has a cute little keyhole and bow detail. So this project, <laughs> I first, when I started it, I was working on it religiously and probably monogamously as well. I loved working on it. It was my first time using pure silk and I love pure silk. It is a perfect drapey flowy fabric. I believe this is the um, recommended yarn for this project and it just has the perfect drape for sleeves like this. I don't think you'd want anything too structured if you're having flowy sleeves. They would just, you know, stick out like that. But this just has some beautiful drape and it just lays perfectly on my body, which is what I was hoping for. So like I was saying, I was working on this a lot when I first started it a year ago. But then I got a little crazy and apply for so many test nets and that got in the way of this project. I had to put it down for months and months and months just to get these test nets done. And then once I was able to work on it again, I had other plants going and then gift nets and everything like that. So I just kind of got bored of it and sick of it because I lost that momentum. But I did pick it back up. Obviously I'm wearing it when I did pick it back up. I picked it back up March 1st I think and I was about here so I only had about this much done on one sleeve a raw neckline and this much of the body so I finished all of the body since then finished off both sleeves and did the I-cord edging I wasn't looking forward to doing the I-cord but it actually went by surprisingly fast I did I think it calls for about um, 16 centimeters for the eye cord tails for the end so you can tie the bow. I believe I did about 20 centimeters, maybe even just past that. I'm sorry if you can hear any cars driving by. I do have the window open because I am dying of heat right now. <laughs> I get crazy hot flashes and I just had one before turning the camera on so I just needed to have the window open. So sorry if you hear anything. <laughs> anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the eye cord, it wasn't a big deal at all. It actually went by surprisingly fast. So that was really nice because that was my last thing that I had to do. I always leave the neck to the end and the sleeves to the end. 
Uh, I'm always impressed by people that do the neck and the sleeves first, but for some reason that just doesn't work for me. I might try that in the future with some other knits and see if that kind of helps break things up a bit for me. Anyway, I'm very happy with this knit. I think it's gorgeous and a perfect staple piece for my wardrobe. I haven't knit that much in any beiges or neutral colors, so it's nice to have this just to pair with these you know, bright pants or even jeans. So I'm pleased with the color and just pleased with the fabric overall. I think it's really nice and I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it this summer. I'm hoping anyways and I I was really happy with the pattern. This is, did I even say that this is by the Knit Pearl Girl? <laughs> if I didn't, that's who it's designed by. That was my first time knitting one of her patterns and it was really clear and she's got links and descriptions for every type of technique on the pattern which was great and sorry i keep losing my train of thought today it's one of those days where like the brain fog is there uh, right so it was my first time knitting a knit pearl girl pattern i was very pleased with it I, if I had to, I would knit this again because there weren't any problems with the pattern and I liked the style, but I don't think I would knit it again just because it took me so long and I'm just, I'm happy with the one. I think that's all I need and maybe years down the road I would knit it again because I do love it so much, but anytime soon, probably not. So this is linked down below to my project page on Ravelry. Oh my god. Project page on Ravelry if you're interested in seeing any more details of that. And I everything else that I speak about today will be linked down below to either my project page on Ravelry or the designer's page on Ravelry. I also don't think I mentioned that I knit this in the colorway powder from Pure Silk. So on to my next finished object. This was a whip in the last knitting podcast. My previous episode was a sewing podcast, but my last knitting one, I shared this with you all. This is the Tiny Shells Shawl by Sari Nordlin. I had just a little bit started. You start here, and I probably had about here done. And so you just keep increasing and increasing all the way. It starts with this stockinette with a little bit of pearl ridges. Then each section is broken up by an eyelet row. And then you have this beautiful lace row. And it just alternates between the stockinette with pearls and the lace. So I knit this out of Elizabeth Lavold Silky Wool in the color Seafoam, and this was gifted to me from Knitting Fever, so thank you so much, Knitting Fever. And I must say, and it's not just because I was gifted this, but I must say, like, I really, really enjoyed working with this yarn. I, it's, like, really soft and airy. Yeah, it's a DK weight wool, but it's not that heavy at all. Sorry if you just heard that again. I forgot to turn off the volume on my phone. Let me do that. And also this color, I've never really loved this color except for when I was little. I loved these kind of bright, like light blues. And I was never really drawn to it as an adult, but since working with it, I really, really love it. I think it's a nice fresh color for spring and summer. I actually knit this for my boyfriend's mother as a Christmas present, so I'm just, saving this i'm having it stacked away in my closet and i'm really happy to have one present done <laughs> i'm hopefully going to stay in that momentum we'll see i don't know not making any promises but i'd like to get maybe one present done every month or two and just stack them away so i'm not overwhelmed when it comes to fall christmas time so i just really pictured my boyfriend's mom in this color. She kind of wears light blues a lot and she's got beautiful blonde hair so I think that this would look really good with her and I hope she likes it. I've never seen her wear a shawl or like a scarf or anything like that but maybe this will prompt her to start wearing them <laughs> and I hope that she likes it. So yeah there's not a whole much 
there's not a whole lot to say about this. It was pretty simple. It's a really nice shawl project if you are interested in shawl knitting. I don't believe this is, this is fairly new from Sari and it's not one that I feel like has gotten a lot of attention compared to her other ones, but I really liked this one. And she is, as we all know, famous for her cables and this one doesn't have any cabling. So I thought this was a good option just because I didn't feel like doing cables at the, that time. And it's really like, because of all the lace and the eyelets, it's really light and airy. So I just feel like it's a really good summer spring shawl not only to work on but to wear as well and she will be getting this in the winter time but because it is like a dk wool there's wool in this as well i it will keep her warm in the winter time too especially like when you bunch it up like this it'll still provide a bunch of warmth so that's the final finished object for this episode very happy to have both both of these done and I'm proud of myself for getting this done and for starting a Christmas present for sure. That feels really good. I feel quite accomplished, I must, I must say. <laughs> okay, we'll start with some whips. This is a long-term whip that I've had on the go since not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. I actually cast it on on Christmas Day because I was home alone, sick with COVID. <laughs> unable to see anybody and I just thought this would be a good easy project to cast on while sick. So this is the Calico Quilt Shawl. I forget the designer name but I'll, I'll put it up here and I'm doing a DK weight version and it's just a really nice seamless join as you go um, triangular quilt shawl. <laughs> so this is what, oh, I'm showing the wrong side. Here we go. It's big. This is what I have so far. So <clears throat> I started here, this is my hand dyed. And then you start with the whole bottom. And you have 10 triangles here. And then I recently just started row two, starting on this one. This is my hand dyed as well as the um, the green. I love these colors together. There, that's better. Representation of the color. I Since showing this last, I think I've added this one, this one, and then these two here. So I'm trying to pick this back up like in between finishing projects or if I'm just kind of getting sick of the project I'm currently working on, this is a nice little break. It's super mindless. It's seamless so it's all join as you go by picking up stitches i love it i can't wait to wear this because it's just gonna feel just just so unique and homemade in the best way and i'm just picturing myself wearing it in the summertime at any music festivals or any outdoor festivals that i'll be going to it'll be a nice little shawl not little it's a big shawl it'll be a nice big shawl to wear in the evening to wrap myself around and especially if I'm wearing a nice like linen summer dress I can just picture this cute quilt like shawl around my shoulders and it's gonna be a big one so I think it'll keep me nice and warm I can probably wrap it around a couple times and it is DK weight I'm holding mostly just DK weight for like the bottom here I think it's all just DK for these two ones here, sorry, the needles keep clicking together. For these two, they're fingering weight held double. <clears throat> so this is a great scrappy project, great for advents because that's what it's actually designed for. I believe there are, tw it's either 24 or 25 triangles total. I am just using scraps that I have uh, every time I finish a project uh, and it's DK weight or uh, fingering <laughs> then I can hold a double I'll put it in here so for example this was a hat this was a hat these um, this was some DK socks and this was a vest for my niece this was a hat 
These were some socks. This was just whatever, I don't know. I don't think I ever used the yarn. And this was just some experimentation and I think this was some, yeah, experimentation with dyeing yarn also. So I'm really happy to have picked this back up. Like I said, it's a very long-term project. I don't have any plans to like get it done immediately. I'm just working on it as I go. I would love to have it done come summertime so I can wear it during any cool summer evenings, but if I don't have it done, that's okay. There's no rush here. It's just going to be sitting on my bookshelf ready for me whenever I have the urge to work on it. I also have, let me grab it here, things are getting a little tangled. <clears throat> I have this whole bag just full of scraps, <laughs> leftovers from previous projects, little skeins that I just didn't know what to do with. They're all in here and I'm hoping to get most of them in this shawl. It'll be a good way to use them up. The bag is getting full. There's not really any room for any more uh, scraps. So hopefully I can kind of work through a lot of those. My next whip is one that I don't think I've shown on here before, but it is a plan that I've talked about. So, oh, skeins and balls of yarn just falling everywhere. <laughs> so I am knitting the Nuss Light Top by, I think it's Elizabeth Judith, probably. Anyways, she'll, the name will be up here. I'm using Elizabeth Lebold Hempathy Yarn. This is the color Olive, also color 108. This is like a DK weight yarn and it's a mix of Let's see, 41% cotton, 34% hemp, and then 25% Modell. So I wanted to start this a couple weeks back. And once I finished this top, I cast this on, I think, maybe there was some overlap, doesn't matter. <laughs> and it is a top down circular in the round top. I'm getting very close, a few more centimeters or maybe about like an inch and a half and then I will be splitting for sleeves. So it's a little bit scrunched up on the needles here, but let me just try and even it out a bit. So this yarn was gifted to me a while back from Knitting Fever and I really, really love working with plant-based yarns and summer yarns. I think it's just really fun. I feel like this one has some really good drape to it. So I'm excited to see what it's going to look like. This pattern is really fun because it just, every section is different. So it's not boring at all. There's very few pieces of stockinette. I mean, there are options for this pattern where basically this would be the end of the uh, what do you call it, the textured part, and then the remainder of the body would be stockinette. I'm doing the version where you do a little bit of stockinette after this, and then you continue with the texture again, because I just really liked the look of that. So this is difficult. <laughs> so here we go. As you, This is the front. As you can see, we've got a pearl ridge, some stockinette here on the sides, and then we've got more pearl bumps, one by one ribbing, some really pretty eyelet details, a pearl ridge. This was three by two, pearl bumps again, and then broken rib. And now after the other pearl row, I'm just starting in stockinette again. What's great about this pattern is there's lots of short row shaping. So here's the back, as you can see, there's quite a bit of stockinette here. And the front has like almost nothing. So there is quite a bit of 
short row shaping. There's also more short row shaping within the ribbing here. And then I just did a couple of short row shaping in my dropping stitches, yes. Okay. So once I knit about an inch and a half of stockinette, I'll be able to split for sleeves. And it's just um, been really enjoyable. I work on it an hour each day and I've really been loving it. I think this color is really beautiful. I don't have anything quite like this. I think it's like a perfect, it is a perfect olive <laughs> and kind of like pickle slash grassy green. So I'm excited to have it. I don't have any greens like this in my wardrobe, so it'll be a nice change. I also just really love the texture. I mean, obviously that's the main feature of this pattern. So it'll be nice to have a shirt that's not just plain stock in it and has a little bit of like detail in there. It's sometimes I think would I like just doing the stockinette version because it's easier <laughs> the stockinette version I mean like just the yoke would have the texture and then the rest would be stockinette but I think I really am enjoying the mix of different patterns in here the ribbing and the eyelets and the purling it's nice to change it up every now and then and I ultimately I really do just like the look of it better as an overall finished piece so I am going to stick with that I'm going to not take the easy route out for this and I can't wait to have it done because it's just a gorgeous top and I also am just excited to have this type of plant-based yarn because like I said I think it has some real just like by feeling it I feel like it's going to have a really nice drape to it and really good for some warmer weather it's also picking up the texture nicely which was a concern because it is plant-based but I did see on the project pages that someone else knit this top in the same type of yarn in the same empathy in a different color and the texture was quite visible and didn't hide so that was good especially when you're putting in a lot of effort you don't want to have chosen the wrong yarn and not have all of that hard work go to waste so yeah there's not a whole lot else to say about this project it's really enjoyable so far I would recommend it I really like it I like a lot of her designs and I think I'll probably, I mean, I would love to have this done by the next podcast episode, if not done, extremely close. <laughs> and I might actually on this one, once split for sleeves, I might actually try and finish the sleeves before finishing the body on this one. What's nice is I don't have any finishing work to do for the neckline. It's, it was just like a pearl, two pearl rounds for the neckline. Where's the front? There. <laughs> and no finishing so I love that and then yeah if I just do the sleeves they're short sleeves I would like I think like this is a really nice length maybe just slightly shorter for this one I think I'd like to do that and then go on to the body after that and I'll see if I like doing it that way but yeah next episode I'd love to have it done or at least extremely close to being done Okay, we'll go on to my next whip. Um, Mom, if you're watching, please look away for a little while, skip ahead, or stop watching altogether. <laughs> You've seen most of the episode anyway. Okay, so a couple episodes ago, I shared that I got some yarn from my Nana. I actually got a third box that I didn't share in the episode because it was just getting too long for me, but this is some cool yarn that I got. It is like a mohair wool blend. It's about a DK weight. And I am making this pattern that I'll put up here. And I've just started, as you can see, I just cast this on the other night. I don't have a whole lot done, but I thought it would just be the perfect pattern to use this yarn. Let me grab the ball. 
This is foreign yarn and yeah, 58% mohair, 32% polyamide and 10% wool. It's, I only had about 500-ish meters, so I was kind of limited on what I could make. I came across this pattern and thought it was perfect. I also feel like it matches my mom's style really well, so that was a plus. And it's nice for the fit. It's supposed to be quite like oversized and baggy, so I felt like I could get the fit right and still like make it a surprise for her. I don't know when I want to have this done. I was thinking it could be great for Mother's Day because she could have something handmade from her mom's yarn stash, which would be really special. I don't know if I'll be able to get it done before Mother's Day. I mean, Mother's Day is still about a month away. So I, I might be able to. If not Mother's Day, then it will be a either birthday, which is beginning of August, or a Christmas present. So either way, it'll be a gift for her. And I really like the style of this, especially some the way some of the um, some of the project pages on Ravelry, they looked really beautiful. This designer, she has lots of other designs using mohair and fluffier yarns at kind of like a bigger open gauge. And I feel like that'd be a really good way to get rid of some mohair that you have in your stash if you didn't really know what to use it for. And I is actually you start with a provisional cast on the crochet style, which I haven't done in a while. So that was kind of nice to do that and get some practice in. It's just been stocking out. There's a couple of increases, so it's been pretty good. The only thing about this pattern, and I just remembered this now, is that there are so many abbreviations in the pattern that I find are quite unnecessary and don't need to be there that it makes it more confusing for me. So I have to scroll back to the top, find the little abbreviation chart try and find the one that's there because there's a lot that looks similar. <laughs> They're just different by like one letter and see what it means. And it's just, and then I see it and I'm like, okay, well, I don't really have to do anything with that. And it just adds a lot of com confusion and back and forth for me that I find is unnecessary. And it's not like, I think that's just because of the style that I'm used to and enjoy working with where it's like less is more. I find that this has a bit more and it's just caused more confusion. Not to say that it's a bad pattern and some people probably really love that style. I just don't. So if you're like me and you don't like that kind of style where there's like so many abbreviations that you have to go and learn that I've never seen before and just a lot of text and wording, then it might not be a pattern for you, but it is doable. And once you get used to it and kind of get your head wrapped around what's going on, it's not too bad. It's just kind of like at the beginning, I was quite annoyed because I'm thinking, what does all of this mean? And, and, and maybe it's me, maybe these are common terms, but I've never seen them before these abbreviations used. And yeah, it just, it kind of put me off to starting. I started it anyways the same day that I bought it and read through it, but I wasn't excited about starting it because it was just like, it seemed like more work than necessary to get started by just trying to learn these terms. So that was kind of, you know, but it's okay. I, it'll be worth it. And as long as there's like, as long as I get the desired outcome that I'm, I'm fine, I'm happy with that. I'm debating whether or not to show this next whip, which are a pair of socks, because they're not fully done and they are a design that I want to put out into the world. So I'm wondering if I should wait till they're fully done to share. I think I am because I'm just working through some things right now and I wanna be able to speak about it fully before sharing it with you all. So I should be done next episode anyway and I can share them with you then. So that's something to look forward to if you <laughs> even care, I guess. Uh, one thing, so that's it for whips. Again, I'm just trying to work on a few things here and there to not overwhelm myself and to make sure that I don't have a growing pile of whips because I just finished a lot of whips and I don't want to get a huge pile again. 
So one thing I do want to talk about though is a shirt. So I'm going to pit, put up a picture here. This is a shirt that I sewed not that long ago. It is the Romy Gathered Top by Sohow7. I have shown this before because I've worn it on the podcast, but I sewed this out of some old linen fabric sheets or sheets that I got from my sister and she wasn't using them anymore and they were just 100% linen perfect for sewing and I really liked the feel of the fabric. So I did sew up that top and I liked it. I was really proud of how it looked and the clean lines and hems and all of that but every time I wore it I hated the color on me I felt like it really washed me out and I hate gray I'm not a gray person it makes me feel down it reminds me of gray skies I hate gray skies I just I'm not a gray person so I decided to dye it and let me go grab it here it is I am so happy with it I feel like it's so, so much better. I dyed this with the like RIT, R-I-T dyes in the color dark green and I got the liquid version and I used about a quarter cup of dye and just dyed it in the dye pot that I usually do my yarn dyeing in. And it worked out perfectly. It dyed really evenly. I was thinking of naturally dyeing this, but I just didn't want to play around with it to be honest I just wanted a green and there we go that's what I ended up with so I bought the red dye for it and I'm really really happy with how it turned out I feel like this color is much better on me than the gray that just made me sad so I've already worn this like three times since dyeing it this was just like on Thursday and no maybe twice I've worn it twice and it's Sunday today by the way so I've worn it already so much more than I would have worn it had it stayed that gray gross not gross but just depressing color depressing in my eyes so I have a lot more of this fabric and I'm now excited about it and I want to use a lot more of it all of it if I can and I know that I can just dye it easily I'd love to make some little shorts that could match and possibly a dress version of this and I have more of that green dye, but knowing now that that red dye works really well, I'd love to place with some other colors too. So I just wanted to share this because if any of you have some, in, like any clothes, I guess, that you're just not happy with the color, but you like the piece, I would recommend that red dye. I think I've used it before, but not recently. And I just was really happy with it. I only had it in the dye bath for maybe 30 minutes and then I rinsed it out with some cold water. A lot of color did bleed out, but it remained like the dye remained in the fabric still and I just rinsed it until the color ran or the water ran clear. And yeah, hung it up to dry and it's been great. I haven't given it like another wash since then, but before I wash it in the washing machine, I will probably just either wash it with all blacks or hand wash it separately before I feel comfortable washing it with other clothes, just because I'm not entirely sure if it is going to bleed onto other clothes. But I think like I did get a lot of the dye out when rinsing it, the color was running or the water was running clear. So that's a good sign. That's all I have to share with you for whips and sewing. I did, oh God. yesterday in Calgary, there was a fiber shindig that hosted all the local dyers and makers. So I did go with my boyfriend and I picked up one skein. I didn't want to get crazy. And I, this was a new to me dyer. This is Illuminated Dye Studio. This is the color London Bridge. I'll put it up here. As you can see, oh, something just fell off. <laughs> Stretchy sock yarn. So it's a fingering weight yarn, 
40% cotton, 40% tensile, and 20% nylon slash elastic. And so the dyer is actually allergic to wool. So she only sells and dyes wool-free yarns. And she showed me this. It's got a bit of stretch to it, if you can see. And it's cotton. It's a sock yarn. I thought, I'm going to try this out and see if this will work for some summer socks. It's a dusty blue with like the slightest bit of speckling and color in there. So I'm so excited about this. Once I finish the pair of socks that I mentioned earlier, I'm going to cast these on with the same design, I think, and see how these work. I am very excited because I'd love to have some cotton socks for summer. I recently bought a pair of clogs that I cannot wait to wear with some hand knit socks, and I think this would be a great, great hand knit sock yarn. I'm hoping that it's stretchy. I'm hoping that they don't sag or, you know, lose its shape. I'll keep you all up to date. I am going to do like the work, the sock design that I have or that I have been working on does incorporate ribbing like throughout the whole leg and foot. So that does help with the shape and the elasticity of it. So I think that would be a good project to try these with. This is a hundred gram skein with 377 yards so a bit on the thicker side of a, like maybe that's considered more of a sport weight but I do like heavier fingering weight slash sport weight socks I just like the way I like knitting them I feel like just that bit of thickness and bit more plump I really enjoy that so I thought this was really interesting something I've never seen before and I'm excited to try it out and let you all know about that. So that's all I got at the Fiber Shindig. There's lots of beautiful things. A lot of vendors and dyers that I've seen before just because they're all local, but still just absolutely gorgeous stuff there. And I originally was going to go in and maybe buy some buttons or some stitch markers and not any yarn because I didn't need any yarn. But nothing else was really calling out to me, so I did get that one skein. And I figured that I'm going to use that skein up fairly quick anyway. It's something different that I don't have in my stash, so I kind of thought it was the perfect item to buy if it was going to be yarn. <laughs> so yeah, that was really good. I enjoyed that. There, It was like not too big, and it was busy, but it wasn't like too crazy, and... It was in a part of the city that I'm never at because it's just a different quadrant of the city. So it's kind of nice to get out into a different area. It's also an area that my boyfriend works at. So I got to see like his area of the city that he's in all the time. And uh, yeah, that was kind of cool too. I actually felt like I was in a different city just because I never go there. But anyway, yeah, that was fun. It was cool to go to like a fiber event because I don't go to a lot of them. If you're in the Calgary area also, there's also going to be a fiber festival, fiber event at the Millerville racetrack where like where the Millerville farmer's market is. And that's going to be May 11th, I believe. So the Saturday, which is the Mother's Day weekend. So the day just before Mother's Day. If you're, yeah, again, in the area of Calgary, then um, that could be a good one to go to. I really want to go to that, so I might. It's also, if you've never been to Millerville area, it's a beautiful area. It's a great drive. It's outside of Calgary. It's just um, really beautiful, and I think around that time of year, it'll be even more beautiful. So something to keep your... Um, calendars open for if you're interested and in the area. I think that's all I have for today. I'm trying to think. I do have a bit of plans, but I think I'll just save that for the next episode because it's time for me to uh, say goodbye. <laughs> anyway. All right. Thank you so much for sticking around if you've stuck around this long 
Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out my channel. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I hope you got some progress on some projects or maybe some new ideas. And I'll talk to you all next time. Bye!